Hi, I'm Paul Pavley. I'm a gastroenterologist at Canberra Hospital and the Australian National University working on the causes of Crohn's disease. There's been an association between E. coli and Crohn's disease for several decades. The first pathological and culture-based studies of surgical specimens showed E. coli in the draining lymph nodes using immunohistochemistry and other techniques. The demonstration of adherent invasive E. coli in the early 2000s built upon the earlier descriptions and provided a plausible mechanism by which E. coli could trigger Crohn's disease. Adherence and invasion of epithelial cells and replication within macrophages. We sought to identify a specific molecular property of E. coli, characterised as adherent invasive E. coli, to provide insights into possible pathogenic mechanisms uh, by which they could trigger Crohn's disease. I'm Dr. Claire O'Brien and I'm a research fellow at the Australian National University Medical School and Inflammatory Bowel Disease Research Group at Canberra Hospital, Australia. Today I'm going to talk to you about our study entitled Comparative Genomics of Crohn's Disease Associated Adherent Invasive E. coli. So adherent invasive E. coli have been implicated in Crohn's disease and they're defined by their ability to adhere to and invade intestinal epithelial cells as well as survive and replicate within macrophages in vitro. Now the tests used to identify adherent invasive E. coli strains are extremely laborious and time consuming and so we set out to identify a molecular marker for AIEC. To do this, we isolated 41 B2 phylogroup strains of E. coli from 19 patients with inflammatory bowel disease and 17 without. We determined using the phenotypic assays whether they were adherent invasive E. coli or not, and we sequenced the genomes of all 41 strains. We found that 11 out of 41 of our E. coli strains were adherent invasive E. coli and they're designated by the red font in this phylogenetic tree. You can see that they have very diverse genetic backgrounds as they're spread throughout the tree and they don't cluster together. We also found that there were no genes or base composition differences in the DNA of these strains that were exclusive to them. Interestingly, 79% of our 41 E. coli strains were able to survive and replicate within macrophages but didn't meet the cutoff for adherent invasive E. coli because they weren't able to adhere to and invade intestinal epithelial cells. However, these strains may still be important in Crohn's disease as they may be able to translocate the bowel wall via an ulcerated area and therefore be taken up by macrophages where they can survive and replicate and provide an ongoing stimulus to the immune system. So although our study failed to identify a molecular marker of adherent invasive E. coli, we do suggest that a broader group of E. coli may be important in Crohn's disease and warrant further research.